Great. So, hello there, everyone, and, and welcome to this webinar on the new conducive I.O. assessment tool. Uh, my name is Spencer Allingham, and I'm the technical director here at Conducive Technologies EMEA. Uh, there we go. Um, so, we were known for years as DiskKeeper, as many of you may know, and we rebranded to Conducive as our technology has evolved from defragmentation to now preventing fragmentation from occurring in the first place, and more to optimizing storage I.O. streams for greater efficiency and throughput, especially in virtualized environments. Now, there may be some disk keeper or velocity customers on the call, or perhaps even some underleak customers. Many customers only know us for our file system optimization, but there are loads of customers as, as well using underleak too. Um, they, they use that for their recycle bin for file servers to keep their data safe, and it means that they don't have to rely on backups all the time to restore data. But because of the work we've been doing with optimization of I.O. streams with Velocity, Gartner named us Call Vendor of the Year, uh, Storage Magazine named us Storage Product of the Year, we're OEM'd by some of the biggest hardware manufacturers out there, like Western Digital, SanDisk, HP, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Lenovo. But the core technology that prevents fragmentation and streamlines I.O. traffic can be found in both DiskKeeper and Velocity. So today, though, I'm not here to talk about DiskKeeper or Velocity, but a new free I.O. assessment tool that we've just made available. And this is a, an extra tool for you to put into your tool belt to help you from an from a I.O. performance troubleshooting standpoint. Now, at this moment, um, this is not a tool that we've productized. Um, as mentioned, this is a tool that we're making available for free uh, exclusively for our customers. So this will just be a short loan, on maybe 15 minutes or so, to give you a peek at the tool and explain how you can use it. I'll stop after these couple of slides for any questions. Um, you can put questions into the uh, Q&A box on the bottom right-hand side of the WebEx window. And I'll do my best to answer them all before the end of this session. So the first question is, what is this tool? Um, I like to call this an IO bottleneck finder. And that's really what the tool is. Now, you may have your own performance monitoring tool on some level, but this is a little different from most monitoring tools as it isn't showing any real-time data. In fact, what this tool is doing is simply collecting and aggregating the system performance data that's already sitting in your Windows systems, whether they are VMs or, or physical servers. And most users run the tool for a working week, and at the end, the tool analyzes that data and puts in front of you a very easy to read report that shows you everything that the tool uncovered. So you can find out, do you have IO issues on the systems? And if yes, what those issues are, where they're occurring, and at what time of the day. So you can think of other tools as giving you real-time data. What this tool is trying to do is dig in and find the worst moments or the worst five minutes in every hour, and then report back to you any performance deviations it's finding from the normal or average that you see during other times. So in every five minutes in every hour, we're looking for the absolute maximum workload where your system is being pushed to its most strength. And then we're reporting back to you the data that we're finding. So. The IO assessment tool cross-correlates data from 11 different metrics. And if we do see strong deviations outside the median or average, we report to you what those deviations are and report to you what they look like when they're at their heaviest. If there aren't any major deviations, then the systems will just be listed in green, showing that they're running just fine. So this just gives you a quick tool that you can run in your environment simply to give you empirical evidence on whether you have I.O. issues in that environment or not. Now, after the tool finishes running, as you can see, um, we list all the servers that have been measured and we color code them depending on how badly they're being impacted by storage performance issues. Red systems are being critically impacted 
Yellow systems are being moderately impacted, and green systems, as I mentioned before, they're, they're running just fine. So this is a tool that you can use regardless of whether Disk Keeper or Velocity is installed. Um, if Disk Keeper or Velocity is installed on the systems, some of them may still show up in red, but it's important to look at all the metrics. I've seen it in the environment where it's still being strained despite Velocity being installed, but the production workload was so much increased, in fact tripled, and the systems could process so much more data per hour that the environment was still under stress, but simply because it was able to do so much more work in the same amount of time. So that workload in gigabytes metric is very important. And the tool is just reporting on metrics supplied by the Windows operating system. So if the systems are still being pushed to their maximum, it is going to show that regardless of whether Disk Keeper or Velocity is installed or not. The tool is completely impartial. For those customers who've only installed Disk Keeper or Velocity onto some of the machines in their environment, this tool could be a great first step for them to scan the rest of the environment and see which other systems could make good candidates to put a trial copy of Disk Keeper or Velocity on and evaluate what we can do to those systems and what we can do for those systems and how much more improvement could be had. And the tool is, is fairly unique in that it has one measurement that nobody else does as far as I'm aware, and this measures the I.O. blender effect. Uh, this is where you have IOs coming from multiple VMs at the same time, passing through the hypervisor to the storage underneath. And when you have them coming at the same time, that can cause conflicts. And this will measure that and tell you how much the IO blender effect is affecting your virtualized environment. Now, I've got a question come through from Joel who says, does this tool have to be installed on each server? Well, the answer is no. You don't actually install anything. There are no agents to deploy and certainly no reboots required. It's just a simple executable that you run from a machine, so it's completely non-disruptive. And it will gather the measurements that the Windows OS is creating all the time to monitor performance using Windows Management Instrumentation, or WMI which by default is turned on in Windows machines, and it'll put those metrics into a little CSV file. Then at the end of the data gathering period, which can be as little as one day or as much as a whole week, it'll analyze those measurements to produce the report. So let me uh, flip over to a, a copy that I've got open, and we can take a, a look at the actual tool itself, see what it looks like. There we go. So this is what you see when, when you run it. Um, we would send you a, a zip file which contains the executable. Uh, you simply run that on a Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2 or later machine. Then after you launch it, there are just three simple steps to get started. First, in this section here, uh, you enter the systems that you want to monitor or measure. You can use IP addresses, fully qualified domain names, or if you've got a text file that's got the systems listed inside, you can call that as well. And here's a, here's a helpful hint. Try to choose around 20 to 25 systems that share the same storage or that share the same hypervisor. Good candidates are machines that are running very storage-hungry applications like SQL Server, SharePoint, Oracle, Exchange, business information apps like IBM Cognos, perhaps SAP, or servers that have a file server role. Things that are doing a lot of storage IO traffic, basically. And if you select machines that are sharing the same storage, you'll see that IO blender effect being measured. Now, after you've selected the systems, you select the duration and when to start. And that's this bit here. So you can see here, one to seven days, and you can choose a day of the week or start it now. Um, keep in mind that if you select a particular day, it'll wait for midnight, so 0000, zero, zero, zero on that day as a trigger to start. So today's Thursday, so if you told it to start on a Thursday, it would wait until the next instance of midnight on a Thursday. And as we've already passed midnight today, um, 
that means it would start on Thursday next week. So that's just a little gotcha that, that hopefully you'll avoid. Um, and as I said, there's, there's this option to start now if that's what you want to choose. Typically, though, we find users, uh, they, they, they usually started on a Monday and they run it for five working days so that they can measure that working week. Um, the last step down here is to enter some user credentials so that the tool can access the servers that you want to measure. Normally, it's a domain admin user account that's used so that you can make sure of being able to access that WMI data on those other remote systems. And then you, you simply hit the Start Data Collection button down here. And at this point, you'll see a, a countdown timer of how long it will be until it actually starts gathering the data. And then you'll see, once it started, another countdown timer whilst it's actually gathering the measurements. And when it completes, it will do some number crunching um, while well, it sort of analyzes the measurements and, and goes through the data that it's collected. And that, that may take a few minutes, so do you have to be a bit patient with that. But once complete, it'll give you the report. And you don't have to, but you do have the option to send the results back to us at Conducive to have an engineer analyze the report and go through it with you. You can either click the Send to Conducive button or attach the little CSV file that gets generated to an email and send it to one of the engineers. It won't be sent automatically by default, though. Um, so we definitely encourage you to send us the data so that we can go through it with you and see if there are any I.O. performance issues. Um, the CSV file is put into the same folder as the executable that you run. So if I bring that folder up here. So here's my executable, that you can see a couple of example CSV files here. So it'll get put into this same folder. So let's go back here. Oh, and if you wanted to, you can load in that CSV file at any later date to bring the report up again. And that's basically what I've done here. So let me bring up my other copy showing the example report. There it is. Okay. So you'll notice there's a lot of systems in red. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see some systems in, in yellow. Uh, there we go, there's some. And um, there's, there's some there in green as well, um, indicating whether the machines are being critically impacted by storage performance issues, moderately impacted, or if they're running just fine. So by default, the report will include all the machines that are critically impacted, so that's these red ones here. But you can go ahead and select more machines, or indeed all machines to include in the report, just by putting a, a tick next to them. So you can see here all the red ones are ticked. By default, the yellow ones aren't, and, and neither are the green. But you can override that and include them if you want to, or click this first tick box here to automatically select them all. So there are 11 different metrics that have been measured. Um, like the workload in gigabytes, IOQ depth, IOPS, IO response time. Let's bring some of these up here. Um, and, and so on. You know, there's, there's 11 of them. Um, and I'll, I'll go through just a, a couple of these with you. The first one is workload in gigabytes. So let me expand that out here. So this shows the amount of data that is being processed each hour of the, of the day, of the 24-hour period. By itself, it doesn't show you any bottlenecks, but it does show you the times of the day when your environment is busiest. So let's take a look at one of the other metrics like uh, IOQ depth. Let's expand that one out. IOQs occur basically when an IO is waiting to be processed, but it can't because it's waiting on one or more other IOs to be processed first, so it has to wait. If there's a large IO queue, that's a lot of IOs waiting to be processed. Think of it a bit like people trying to get on a bus, but they can't all get on the same time, so a queue forms. It's kind of the same thing here. So. Next, let's have a look at the uh, split IOs, because that's quite an important one here. Okay. A split IO is where the Windows operating system takes what should be one storage IO and splits it into multiple IOs. Now, what's important to remember here is that each IO the system has to generate 
takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. So for example, if you're saving a 20 gigabyte file in a thousand separate IOs, that's actually much more efficient. It's a much more efficient way of moving that data between server and storage than if that same 20 gig file is split into 20,000 separate IOs. When a, a file gets split into pieces like this, each piece of the file has to travel out to the storage in a separate IO packet. Think of it a bit like this. If you've got a liter of water, which is the data, on one side of the room, and you need to move it to the other side of the room, which is your storage, it's much more efficient to make one trip with a liter-sized jug and it is to pour that liter of water into lots of tiny paper cups and then take the first cup across the room and then come back and take the second cup across the room and then come back and take the third cup across the room and so on. Splitting IOs makes everything work so much harder than it needs to to process any given unit of data. So the performance penalty caused by these excess unnecessary split IOs actually gets amplified in a virtualized environment. But I'll talk about that more in just a moment. Now, you can see here that the median average, this, this red dotted line here, is showing that it is normal for the environment to produce uh, 12,108 split IOs an, in an hour. But all 24 hours in this case are producing split IOs at a much higher rate than that. The spike here at 3 p.m. Um, was 31,485 split IOs. And during this particular day that was measured, it says just up here, that's 2,756,220 split IOs were generated in total by these machines. Now, that's an awful lot of excess unnecessary IOs for the infrastructure to have to deal with and basically represents wasted compute resource. Now, I want to bring up one more metric here, which is the IO blender effect. Here we go. I mentioned earlier that the performance penalty caused by split IOs gets amplified in a virtualized environment. This is because of the IO blender, uh, the IO blender effect, where the small fractured split IO from each of the VMs has been funneled through the hypervisor where the traffic gets mixed and blended together. And what comes out from the hypervisor is a, a chaotic mess of small, fractured, and now highly randomized IO streams that by the time they reach the storage controller couldn't be less storage friendly. Now, because the storage is only receiving data in very small, random chunks at a time, it only has the opportunity to create very small stripes across its media. And this means many more storage level operations are required to process that data when it's being written. And many more storage operations are required again if that data then gets read back in at a later date. So what we're doing with the IO Blender Effect Index is looking to see which systems had storage IO performance problems during the same time slices. And the more systems that had issues at the same time, the higher the index number. I like to think of this a bit like the IO queue depth, but now taking into account IO that's being generated on other machines that are sharing the same storage. Now, this is, this is unique to the IO assessment tool. I don't believe that anybody else out there has a tool that can quantify this metric for you. So, these are just some of the 11 metrics that the tool looks at. Uh, when it's done the analysis and created the report, there's a, a, conclusion, a conclusion section down here at the bottom. Um, now, in this report, we saw some critical IO bottleneck issues. The summary points out that these systems were suffering from split IO issues and also the issues caused by the IO blender effect. If this customer was to use the DiskKeeper or Velocity software, this would have greatly reduced the number of split IO situations and in turn reduced that IO workload that was required on the storage and helped to reduce that IO blender effect. Now, in addition to what was detected, it will tell you what the potential is for IO performance optimization, just here. Um, and this is 
potential for improvement with the product like disk keeper or, or velocity. And in this case, as you can see, the potential for improvement is high. Now, yep, I, I've been asked a question about whether the graphs are for all servers or one particular server. In fact, it depends on which servers you select at the top of the report up here. Here we go, up here. Um, so you can select only one machine to see its workload, or you can um, you can select a group of machines such as only the ones in red, or you can look at all the systems measured for a more holistic overview. It's entirely up to you. So this tool will give you visibility of which systems are having performance problems, and of course you could mask these problems by adding more hardware and over provisioning and over buying hardware to mask the problem. But before you do that, why not take a trial copy of Diskeeper or Velocity? It's a software-only solution that will actually fix the problem at the source where it occurs and see what difference that makes to the environment. It's almost certainly a more cost-effective solution than continuing to over-buy and over-provision hardware. Now, when this webinar is over, you'll get a, an email from your Conducive account manager, which will provide you with a free, no obligation link to the IO assessment tool, so you can get a copy for yourselves. Please do run the tool and, and get the results for your environment. And do feel free to send the report data to us at Conducive. We can then schedule a time with you to review the results with one of our senior engineers. Um, if there might be a proxy at your site that prevents you from sending the report data from within the tool. Um, there's this uh, center conducive button down here where you put your company name in, hit that, and the tool will, will throw it across the web, the web at one of our servers. But if you've got a proxy at, at your location and you can't do that, have a look in here and find the CSV file that's get, got generated from when you run it. And just simply attach that to a, an email and send that to one of us. And We'll be, we'll be very happy to uh, analyze the data and, and step through it with you um, and really see if there are any storage issues there or not. So I hope that this session has been helpful. Um, you're all more than welcome to get in touch with me directly if you have any other questions. I will have a look to see if there are any questions that have come through the WebEx in just a moment. Um, you can email me directly at sallingham at conducive.co.uk or you can Skype me at spencer.allingham. So let me stop sharing this monitor for a moment. We'll see if uh, any questions have come through on the chat box or whether I've done a very good job of explaining it. <laughs> nope, it, it all looks fine. So um, other than the questions that we had earlier, there are no further questions. So I hope this has been useful, everybody. Please do feel free to use the tool. If you don't get it in a timely manner, pester me directly. I want to make sure you get a copy. And do feel free to share the results with us so that we can step through them with you. Be more than happy to uh, have a look and, and analyze the data. Thank you, everyone. Have a very good rest of day, and I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Take care.